Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to introduce this mathematical software called Sage. It's available online in this address so that you don't have to download the software, you can just use that after you log in to this website. The website looks like this and if you scroll down and you will find Try Sage Online. After you log into, the, I mean, go to that website and create account, and then you log in, then you will have this type of environment. This is my email address, and this is the personal space where you can create a Sage worksheet and you can use mathematical software there. They structure their space like that, so you have a project space. Within that project space, you have several folders you can put in there. And inside folders, you actually have that individual worksheet. This is where you actually have your uh, files and workspace there. But you can make this project public so that if you have a collaborators and come in and work together in that space. But that's um, roughly the structure of their space. So that's why we have this thing. So I created two projects, cryptography, the something that we're going to, to align in our number theory course. And this is another thing that I created for you guys. So I'm going to go to this tutorial project. If you open the project for the first time, you probably have a blank space and you can find this new button. From there, you can create files and you can create folders and you can create all the other things. What you, we are mostly doing in this course is the Sage worksheet. We're not going to click on File. You can create folders, but the actual thing that we use a lot is this Sage worksheet. And the convention of this name of this file is the year and the month and a date and the time and something like that. So actually, it turns out it's a very useful thing to have in itself. It shows you when it's created. It's a quite an information to distinguish one from another. But you can change the name. So let's go ahead and create this one in Sage Worksheet. So the file is created and this is the space where you're going to type in mathematical commands and then it's, you can execute um, those commands and get some results. And by clicking on back on here in the file, you can go to the list of files and by clicking on that you can browse through what's in that folder and so on. So this is how the workspace looked like. The syntax is for um, basic operation and exponential and sine and trigonometric function. Those are similar to um, the key punches um, you use for the calculator. So without much of introduction, we're going to do some calculation here, for example. So I typed in things like this, 2014 raised to the 113th power. That's going to be a large number. And um, if you write it like this, and then if you hit Enter key, and then it only goes to the next line, and you can type in another arithmetical uh, command like this. And this time I typed in 113 raised to this 2014th power. These are all large numbers. Now if you execute... Uh, run this command and it's going to calculate. The way to do that is this button and execute current or selected cells. I think these two things are in, a, in the same cell. Or you can hold shift key and hit enter and that's a very convenient way. And I did that. It seems like it tried to in, um, show everything in one line. So 2014 raised to that power is in the first line. As I move that you can see the result is there and the second one is in the second line. So we have this horizontal line that is indicating that this whole thing in between these two horizontal lines is called a one group or one cell. So every time you hit this button or shift enter, it's going to execute every line that is in between these two bars called a cell. Next example I want to show is this two thing, 2014 divided by 113. And the second one will be this dot in here that's the same as 113.0 and here is 113 and if you type numbers like this the system will recognize this one is a numerical approximate value so this one will give you numer numerical approximate value and this one will probably just uh, reduce if there's any common factor but try to keep this uh, quotient form so shift enter 
So this is a result in this cell. We have two commands. The first line says this whole thing exactly repeated because there's no common factor. And the second one, it says um, it's close to 17.82 something. Here's another example. This is um, sine, that trigonometric function, and pi is representing the transcendental number, pi and divided by 11 inside the um, parenthesis. If you type this one in a calculator, usually that the calculator gives you numerical value. And here, um, it try to keep everything as exact as possible. So if you hit Shift Enter, it gives you this result, which is pretty much the same thing written in a slightly different way inside the a parenthesis. So if you want this uh, result in numerical value, then you go ahead and click on that uh, command line. You can change this entire thing um, to numerical value, and either you can put dotted in there, or if everything here is written in letter, then you can also use the trick as one point, and that's the one multiplied to this quantity. That's the same thing, but because of the 1.0, it indicates that we want a numerical results, and if you do that, it didn't do anything. I think it simplified this inside first, and um, to do the same thing. I even tried this one 11 dot, and then it changed that entire thing into uh, inside here, and didn't really change this whole value into um, numerical value. So rather we'll keep it this way, maybe we're gonna multiply, at one point, and this might do, and shift enter. Um, so all the trick that I had uh, been using with the Mathematica didn't work here. Uh, so uh, here I really have to use this command n. If you put, if you, this is the quantity you want to compute, sine of pi divided by 11, and if you want a numerical value, and you can put n numerical value, and you have to put this parenthesis around and you can specify 10 digit. Then it's going to give you 10 digit. If you want 20 digit, then it's going to give you a 20 digit. If you just delete that whole thing and whatever the default number of digits it has, I think it's going to give you that much. So by just simply putting an N, you get some nice numerical value without even specifying the digits there. So let me go through a few more examples that, that are available in the calculator. And here's arc sine, the sine inverse function. It'd be used like this. Exponential function, the transcendental number e raised to 1 would be like this. If you change that 1 to 1, um, not 1 point, but just 1, it's going to spin out like this. So I went back to this numerical value. Another thing is a logarithm. So log function goes like this, log of a 100 with a base 10, that will be 2. So the base goes there. If you omit that, it's going to take that as a natural log. So for example, like this is log a 100 dot uh, with a base e, the transcendental number, the value will be this one. Next line here, I copied and pasted this numerical value and then raised the exponential again. So that's exactly the meaning of the log. If you raise the transcendental number e to 4.6051 and to this number, it's supposed to be very close to 100 because it's not exact number. Often you'll be asked to do some homework problem within this um, Sage worksheet and as being asked to submit this worksheet and hard copy of the worksheet. So you have to print out using this button and this will generate a PDF file, I think. And then you have to print out that PDF file. So this is um, end of the first uh, introductory tutorial. Thanks.